Hello everyone and welcome. I believe my desktop is live, so we're going to go ahead and get started with today's coffee talk. So just introduce myself. My name is Madison. I'm the marketing coordinator at the Business Software Center. I've been here about three years and so what I like to do is just provide just helpful information about what's going on currently in the SAM and SAS market etc so today we're just going to talk about the optimization versus compliance so general overview of the difference between the two and how you can use both to better your software asset management strategy so of course our questions and answers section is open please use that if you have any questions if you ever need to get in contact with me you can use uh, the hashtag coffee talk tbsc on our facebook youtube Twitter or LinkedIn pages, and I can certainly find you that way. Or you can email me info at businesssoftwarecenter.com. So yes, I will be able to get to the questions towards the end of this session today. In the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So what exactly is SAM? SAM stands for Software Asset Management, and it falls into IT Asset Management. So you can see um, this diagram on the right side really gives you a better look on where software management is, and then you can see that's where software license compliance also rests. So I would say software management is more of the optimization area, whereas the compliance is um, well, the compliance area is more uh, focused on whether you're compliant or not with your licenses. So yes, uh, I have a question for you. What does your IT department do? Does your IT department monitor your asset management? Does it go further to track and monitor your current software that you're using? You'd be surprised to know how many of these um, things are overlooked by the IT department simply because this often involves a lot of manual work. So I'm just going to show you here today how to automate the task, make it easier and lighten up the workload for your IT department. And the bonuses of this presentation is that you'll really learn how to stay compliant and manage your software in a quick, easy and efficient way. So the goals of SAM <clears throat> are definitely to track the assets that you have. So it could be Microsoft, Adobe, Salesforce, et cetera, any kind of software. And uh, that could be either on-premise software or in the cloud software. Now, software asset management would be great if you could simplify the process. And so ways of doing that are through automation. SAM also has the goal of reducing cost. So exactly paying for what you use, there, there's no point in overpaying if you're not using um, certain features that come with these applications. Of course, we want you to increase your return on investment with your product. You don't want to be wasting your time, money, resources. And with SAM, you have to plan strategically. And what I mean by that is, the company has goals specifically with reducing costs or um, increasing ROI, your SAM management, your SAM manager or your IT department should plan st strategically around the overall company goals. But if you have a small department and you don't have those employees in place, it's not a problem. Um, our tool, Smarter SaaS, can certainly help with this because it's basically an automatic software asset management tool for you. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started with this. What is software compliance? So basically software compliance is what are you legally entitled to use? And so um, that means I know that a lot of people with Microsoft, oh, I'm sorry, a lot of businesses um, who purchase Microsoft licenses might get locked into certain contracts. And these contracts only give you a certain amount of licenses to work with. So depending on if you unassigned, reassigned, or had new employees, um, you might be in violation of what you're legally entitled to use. Say, for instance, you only have 100 licenses in the contract, but you have 120 installs. That would mean that you're violating the compliance. And so ways that you can ensure that you are not violating your compliance is, of course, taking inventory, performing audits in order to um, ensure everything is good to go. Um, you are required to have the correct license for each device and you must run on the correct version. So I would say my um, piece of advice here would be on premise. Sometimes it's really hard to make sure you're still on the correct version. If you haven't already, maybe consider moving to the cloud because the cloud does all these updates for you. But yes, software compliance is a big deal. Especially if you don't want to get um, any ramifications for being in non-compliance. So an example, 
because we're talking about Microsoft, we can talk about um, the auditing process that they have here. So it's formal and mandatory review. It is part of your terms and agreements. And so in the contracts, it might say that we uh, Microsoft has the ability to audit you once every year. Do they actually do that? No, but um, it just is it gives them the legal way of saying, hey, if we need to perform this audit to make sure you're in compliance, we're going to do so. And so if that happens, they will give you 30 days notice and typically it's in written form like in a letter. They won't email you about it. Um, and certain situations trigger audits, especially when it comes to large business growth or large business changes. Um, if Microsoft sees you only paid for 10 licenses, for instance, and now you have 100 employees within a, a short amount of time, they're going to want to follow up and see if you're um, actually paying for the software you have installed. And so, of course, with the auditing process, I did say you get a notification letter um, and then you will get reviewed by. Sorry, let me fix this. You will get reviewed by an independent accounting firm, so that might seem a little sketchy, but Microsoft does hire third party people to do this for you. Um, and this could be um, in your office space that they'll come and depending on how big your office is, it might go a, a few days. But basically at the end of it, you'll receive whether uh, information on whether you're compliant or non-compliant. And so if you're not compliant, um, there's definitely ways you can rectify the situation. And um, Microsoft does offer information on how to fix that on their website. So if you have some time, maybe just Google it and see um, just to mentally prepare yourself for any sort of compliance issues. But we're just going to go ahead and move on. Um, you know, there might be penalties for these violations. I would say worst case scenario is going to court, but typically you just have to pay the back payments of the licensing that you were using. So we're going to just move forward and talk about licensing optimization instead. And so this was in the bracket of software asset management, which is under IT asset management. And so license optimization is essentially part of license management and it ensures you have the correct licenses. It also avoids unnecessary direct costs. So this is entirely what software asset management is, right? Um, you'll see your you'll know your licenses in usage and you know exactly where these licenses are installed. But really, when you think about it, on the drop of a hat, if you looked at your IT department, could you just ask them, OK, well, how many licenses do we have? I guarantee that not many could um, pull this information for you in a quick and efficient way. So I would say ways you can get this data quickly, efficiently would be through a software asset management tool, something like our Smarter SaaS product, which I'll go into more detail about shortly. But I would say um, if you are cons if you are looking to optimize your current situation, here are some qu key questions that you should ask yourself. Are we using the correct licenses? Sometimes we find you might be paying for licenses that have way more applications than you actually need. And so what you can do is um, reduce the license or maybe you need more functionality. So you'll have to upgrade to a different license. Another question is, is the effort of optimizing these licenses reasonable? I would say a lot of these uh, ways for optimizing become reasonable whenever you can make it automatic. Once it's automated, I mean, you can really optimize all day long, couldn't you? So I would say with our Smarter SaaS tool, for instance, if you wanted to reharvest a product, I'm sorry, if you wanted to reharvest a license, you could do it with a click of a button. If you needed to email somebody and ask them about compliance information, you could do it with a click of a button. So we certainly can give you automated solutions to optimization. Uh, another question to ask is what licenses are deployed versus used? And it's once again, this is one of those things that how would your IT department know unless they're manually doing it or you have a tool? And so with our smarter SaaS solution, we can show you the the usage levels of what is currently being used um, and what's not used. So I would say an example would be with Microsoft Teams. We found in some of our research that I believe it's over 49% of people are, are not using their Teams apps with their Microsoft 365 license. And so we ask ourselves certain questions like, OK, well, why exactly are they not using Teams? Is it because they're not fully trained on it? And that typically is the reason. Or is it because they're using a different product like Zoom? And maybe they're only using Zoom because they're not 
comfortable with using Teams yet. And so with our tool, Smarter SaaS, we also can pinpoint who needs training, and then we can provide the training for you through our Bigger Brains partnership. And so this training is a really good value for you and your business just to ensure that you're using all of the licenses that you're purchasing. So another questions, I'm sorry, other questions to consider, can we reharvest licenses? And so that's basically a simple, um, a simple way of saying, is there any way I can take this license and reallocate it to somebody who will actually use it? Is there a license surplus? Um, you know, are we overpaying for licenses we just don't have deployed yet? Are we going to deploy these in the future? And our smarter uh, SaaS product can defi define what licenses are in surplus and we can kind of make plans on how to rectify that for you. And of course, are you overspending on your licenses? Which you can see here um, with our dashboard, it's just a screenshot of our dashboard. You can see that we can certainly find different opportunity amounts that you can earn back based off of the data we can collect. And what's really nice is we can look over the past 180 days and really get a really good grounding and a really good benchmark of where you're currently at and help you get to where you wanna go with those goals you set with the um, software asset management. So of course we can help you with our smarter SaaS and that is through tracking licensing, training leads, um, optimization, reharvesting, et cetera can really give you full detailed analysis of what's going on with your current situation. And we offer this completely free. Um, if you're interested, we do have a free trial. Now this is available on Microsoft App Source and Microsoft Marketplace for free download, which is absolutely fantastic, simple, easy. So I definitely recommend doing it. And um, yeah, if you need a free trial, feel free to sign up for it today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the time here to see if we have any questions coming in. Okay, I do see a question coming in. It's actually about, uh, it's, it's about compliance. Um, so it says, Microsoft only allows us to install on five devices. Does Smarter SaaS allow us to see where or not these licenses are installed? The answer is yes. I'm so sorry I didn't bring this up when I, during my presentation, but yes, our Smarter SaaS product does allow you to view where the licenses are installed and how many are installed. So uh, this is a really good example. So with Microsoft, of course, it only allows five installs, but in some cases we found installs of the same user up to 10 devices, and so we have to ask, these questions, okay, well, are there retired devices? Why exactly did they over install? Are there devices they're not using anymore? And so what you can do is um, follow the Microsoft compliance guidelines, or you can, um, in our Smarter SaaS app, email that particular person and ask exactly these questions and ask them to kindly take themselves off of some of those devices. But there is a way that you can manually do it through Microsoft to get them off of those devices as well. So yes, our Smarter SaaS tool can certainly help you with that. Okay, so at this time, I don't see any other questions coming in, which is fine. Um, so that concludes my coffee talk today. I just wanna thank you so much for joining me. If you ever need to get in contact, please find me, coffee talk TBSC hashtag on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or YouTube. Wonderful, this video will be posted later on, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much and have a great day, bye.